is up you guys this is mini superheroes today hey guys i had the awesome opportunity to interview the lego star wars design team right here in Vilen, denmark at the lego hq we uncovered so many awesome things and i really think there's some valuable insights in here that lego star wars fans have always been wondering so let's head inside and check it out Michael. Hmm. Michael Lee Starkwell, and I'm a design manager, Lego Star Wars. And Madison O'Neill, and I'm a senior graphic designer on Lego Star Wars. Awesome. Yes. 10,000 foot overview. Let's say we're talking to somebody that's completely new to what Lego jobs are. Could you describe briefly what you do for the Star Wars team? Sure. Just John? Well, I'm s luckily still designing models. Uh, that's what I started doing for the project, as well as uh, driving the development of new elements many many years ago um i've since let go of that part of it uh kind of uh still giving input on a on a design level but uh and then still designing models when uh, time allows um and then just kind of uh running a lot of other processes uh trying to help uh jens our creative lead with uh with whatever yeah is needed to keep this machine running and <laughs> That's uh, yeah maddie and jens and i sit every week on a, a call with our our contact uh, with Lucas uh, Licensing and Lucas Films, and um, a, a lot of our work uh, goes yeah, coordinating uh, on that and planning and whatnot. Collaboration. So, yeah. Yep. With the mouse. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm a senior graphic designer. That means I work in the realms of minifigures and stickers for all the sets. And like Michael said, I'm also part of the collaboration process with um, with uh, Lucasfilm. Always working closely with model designers and element designers as well. So we're, yeah, right in there. Maddie <laughs> is the product's character, Rain Man, so he knows <laughs> everything <laughs> character. It's my job to know uh, <laughs> who all these little guys are and, and their cousins and their bosses. And their, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's that. great. That actually uh, feeds pretty well into some of the questions I've prepared for you guys. So that's cool. perfect. Alrighty. So the first question is, you know, with Star Wars, we're nearing 50 years of content that you can pick from. I mean, it is crazy. And for you guys, I'm sure, to some extent, that's a little bit daunting because <laughs> Lego Star Wars fans tend to be some of the more vocal Lego fans and they want <laughs> this kind of set made or this character to appear, whatever the case may be. So can you walk us through what the design process is? Um, interestingly, maybe we could pick one off the table here uh, I think the ATTE would be a good choice just because it's the only one that maybe isn't directly tied to something that's recently come out. Because hmm. I think it kind of makes sense why the Kenobi sets exist, the Justifier, mm -hmm. you know, recent Clone Wars hype. But this kind of calls back to Episode 3, which, you know, yeah, is a relatively older movie at this point. So sure, maybe walk us point. through the process of, you know, how do you decide this is the year for the ATTE and how are you going to do it? Hmm. Well, I think that actually, although it sounds like a model-based question, there's a lot to do with the figure lineup. Figures, yeah. So well, I'm going to give that one to you. Sure, sure. <laughs> we, I mean, so of course we do listen to uh, you know fan feedback and what people are are wanting, uh, and so of course Commander Cody was pretty high on that list. Uh, so when we were doing, um, you know, of course. Uh, we had him in mind from the very we beginning. We wanted to do an updated version for That's a long right. time. That's yeah. right. And this is a great set to be able to do it with. Another set, it just kind of was like the ATT we needed to redo, we wanted to redo. Right. Commander Cody, a character that we've been wanting to get in there, it just kind of was a good alignment there. Yeah. Um, you know, for the price point you want to hit, whatever you want to say. And uh, so, yeah, then we just landed on this fun, uh, I keep calling it a, a gigantic battle pack, because <laughs> uh, we decided to go with this concept where you get all these different clones uh, uh, with it that you can man the, the ATTE with. So, yeah, that's just kind of uh, where we started. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess just to backtrack a little bit, sure. it's a great set. It's maybe my favorite of the wave sitting in front of us here. Um, <laughs> But what makes you decide that now's the time? Is it fans, you know, saying for Commander Cody, mm. and at a certain point it's just like, we have to give the fans what they want, so that's what we're going to do? Or why is now the time? It's That's probably a complex equation, I would say. I mean, when we're working on uh, setting up and uh, deciding on our assortment for a wave, mm -hmm. it's imagine just this 
blank sheet and a lot of post-it notes kind of thing in it. And they're getting moved around all the time. And uh, we're trying to align on what's going on in, in the the pipeline with uh, Lucas mm -hmm. Disney, what's being developed. We want to be there. We also want to make sure that we don't ignore a lot of the wishes from the fan community. We want to make sure that we're there for anything that's going on, uh, that might be going on, um, uh, that kids are really, really uh, interested in mm -hmm. uh, games, you know, the whole gamut. So kind of start putting up those posters, notes, and then and trying to figure out where they fit best. And then, you know, the, at some point the idea for this came up and it just stayed, you know, mm -hmm. so that's, it's not necessarily the time when we decide this could be a good idea. It's not necessarily decide the day, the same day we decide to actually do it. Sure. It, it has to kind of sit there a while and we have to percolate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then we look at the we, options. Yeah, exactly. And then we uh, decide, yeah, we, yeah, that's the way we're going to go. We believe yeah, in that. Perhaps we decide this would be a really good place to lean into something classic because we have a lot of other new content. Mm. Um, yeah. That, that's going to be out at the same time. So what could that be? What would be cool? And setting that assortment is something we we do uh, in close collaboration with our, our partner at Lucas uh, Licensing uh, because they have, uh, of course, all the insight of what's up and coming in their mm -hmm. pipeline and we yeah. want to make sure that we uh, match that. And if we get some, Maddie often has some really great ideas with characters and what cool. we could do and we want to make <laughs> sure, you know, can we, you know, work make this work and uh, yeah. So, well, I'll just ask one more question on this and then we'll move on to something sure. else. I think uh, an insight that a lot of Lego fans would love to know is what the timeline for something like this is. Mm. So this just came out a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Everybody's really excited. We found out about it a little bit before that. And of course, there's rumors floating around mm -hmm. before that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, when was the first time? Okay, so it's maybe a twofold question. Sure. When was the first time this idea was brought up as a serious contender? Mm. And when was it rubber stamped that, all right, we're going to do this? Mm. Well, yeah. I can I can kind of tell you that whenever you decide you know, the helmet, we wanted to update, right? So, yeah. mm -hmm. whenever we do any kind of a new element, we're looking at yeah a year wow. in development, mm -hmm. right? Before That's kind we, of the, the new element is the first thing that we need to have kind of locked down yeah. in a new set. So yeah. maybe to read into that, the conversation starts at okay, we want to update the clone helmet. How do we do that? How do we create a set around that? And then. That, yeah, that's all I mean, part it, of the it, it's, okay, yeah, it, it's not necessarily the deciding factor, yeah, yeah. but it's in the equation. And so mm -hmm. it if, maybe narrows the funnel. Of, sure. I mean, okay, if you're thinking this certainly. is something we want to do, and it's something we talked about long before we decided to do the yeah, set. Yeah, yeah. So um, then we start, we get the idea, well, we could maybe make this work, and that would give us a great opportunity to do the helmet. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Then we want to do this, we want to do this, and then it's sort of like, Balancing out well, we also want to do Cad Bane and we know we want to do a new element there and it's about how, how many new elements can we do? How much time uh, do we have and yeah until yeah. we get the whole thing to balance out? Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. It's like you guys are reading my questions because we are segueing so beautifully. Ah. <laughs> my next question is actually a compliment to you guys because the Lego Star Wars figures consistently year on year have the best printing uh, in terms of, you know, we've gotten C-3PO in the poly bag a number of years ago mm. with different arm colors and printing, printing on the sides. Mm. The case being, compared to a lot of other themes, my primary theme being superheroes, Star Wars blows it out of the water with, <laughs> you know, torso printing, leg printing, new helmets, new heads. So why do you think that is? Why do you think that Star Wars uh, excels compared to all others? If you want to boast, now's the time. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't want to. But, no. I, well, you know... We thank do, you, first off. Yeah, thank yeah, you very yeah, much. That's very kind. I, been a lifelong um, fan. I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean always strive mm -hmm. for that. And I think, you know, we as Star Wars fans, too, feel this responsibility to get things as accurate right as possible give the best impression of these sure. you know moments and characters that we love um and and part of that is just trying to fit these details in yeah. uh, uh you know um the leg print the arm print wherever we can that's kind of a new thing we're starting to be able to do a little bit more of which is great uh, to have the capacity to do that um so you know of course um we work within these frames that we have within the company that everybody has 
and we just try and do the absolute best uh, that we can. So sometimes, yeah. I mean, I, in model design, I mean, we would we would <coughs> we re revisit a model every once in a while. This is not the first time we've done sure. this, and and every time we do, it's it's never just copy paste. It's no. start for from the start, all right from scratch. From the uh, and what new elements do we have uh, now that we didn't have last time? In the same way, when Maddie's working on graphics, or yeah. if there's any new technology uh, in our printing or whatever molding that can be uh, advantageous to create an even better figure than yeah. th this time around, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we want, we want uh, to be there. Production capacity changes for certain things. Um, the the uh, the printing equipment that we have changes. We're always looking to print on new elements if we can, mm. you know, because certain ones have never been printed before. So we need to develop something to be able to do that. Mm. And over time, that stuff adds up, and we are able to to do more and more. And hopefully, as you're saying, it translates into more mm. uh, accurate and enjoyable characters. Mm. Yeah. This is to your credit, but do you think that Star Wars maybe gets a little bit of a priority on? extending that license for printing for new helmet molds because it's been so successful for lego that would be nice, <laughs> be nice but no i don't, I, I don't so. know if it's the okay. case but it would be yeah i think um it's probably like portfolio size yeah i yeah things. i think so i don't i don't know that we have any advantages over any of the other themes i think sometimes yeah. i think everybody seems to they always, it, it's the, you know, grass is always greener on the other side. Sure. It seems like everybody always, always has more <laughs> sure. opportunities than we do. And, and, but it's probably not the case. Um, mm -hmm. So we all have, each uh, product line uh, works uh, with its own budget and, and uh, tries to make the best of what they have to work with. Sure. So I'm glad to, really glad to hear that you, you think we, we yeah. uh, hit the mark with the figures. It's, we work hard on Yeah, that. it's an exciting yeah. time to be involved in that for sure. I think we're one of the... I like to think that we're one of the best themes at um, finding the balance between the correct molded detail and the correct direct decorated detail. Mm -hmm. I think that we really hit the mark almost every single time we do a new element. It really looks like a Lego element when we're yeah. done, and that's important to us. We don't want it to look like it it, it came from another um, toy. Uh, it, it has to look like Lego and the Lego minifigure. I think that the evolution yeah. of the Star Wars uh, Lego line has proved that too, because you know maybe like the original Jango Fett from two thousand two, mm -hmm. maybe now he he looks a little bit older. It's one of my all time favorite. Sure, yeah. with the connected jetpack. Yeah, yeah, but if he yeah. came out in a set now, we would be like, wait, why does he look so blocky and round? But at the time, it looked like a Lego piece. And and things do the style does develop over time. Yeah. Obviously, mm -hmm. if you look back to you know nineteen ninety nine, things have changed over mm -hmm. time. And uh, but it's neat that the eras have different looks, and you can watch yeah, the style yeah. evolve. Yeah, sure. I mean, a good example like for Star Wars is that. It, who would have thought that Star Wars would have developed this skirt <laughs> element? Yeah. yeah, I mean, there are so many themes that, <laughs> with uh, very prominent female characters, that could have easily been there way, way ahead of us. But yeah, we're all, you know we're always trying that, that old uh, 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 sloped element that we used to use was never the <laughs> yeah, the building solution. Uh, element. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. it was the wrong height and it didn't just stay connected very well. And so yeah, yeah. that's just a, an example where we try to yeah, yeah. Do and what we could. You know, a lot of characters are. Are very complex um, so of course we want to bring in the Lego DNA side of things which is a little bit more you know round a little bit more exaggerated playful simplified mm -hmm, of so course. yeah like you're saying with the elements I think yeah we try and do a good job of that. Mm -hmm. well on that idea of kind of pushing the envelope one of the most surprising sets to me and a lot of fans uh, over the last couple of years has been the recent Republic fighter tank with Mace Window and mm. his clone mm. battalion. Yeah, yeah. A big surprise just because of the purple clones in there, but maybe not a surprise because of the success of the 501st battle pack. So mm. it does seem like a natural extension to make a little bit of a bigger set, a tank, to give you another battalion of clones. But as we are Star Wars fans, that dips pretty deep into expanded <laughs> universe lore. They don't really appear in any official media, visual media. It's, that, is. That's, that is true. Yeah. yeah. Um, to my understanding, it was just a Hasbro figure. That's the only place I'd ever seen it growing up. They have done one. Um, it yeah. So it doesn't appear in any visual canon, yeah. but it, they are known. You know, right? Right. Is, I'm not saying they don't exist. It's yeah. Just, yeah. 
Um, when you think of different clone battalions, they would probably not be the first that you would think of. Sure. Uh, just because they're not in any visual media. That's so right. So the question yeah. would be, does that open the door for more deep cut expanded universe stuff? I know you can only say so much about the future, but sure. uh, can collectors and fans feel optimistic that maybe some expanded universe characters who are never going to appear in something canon could get a set someday? Hmm. I see. Uh, yeah, I mean, when we have opportunities to do something like that, we like to. I think, you know, even though they may not be uh, well-known, they're easily decodable. People know Mo Mace Windu, right? Sure. So we got to do him in a new um, new costume with his arm print and things. Mm -hmm. But you can understand a clone trooper with, uh, you know, even if you're not aware of the 187th, uh, sure. oh, it's a purple clone trooper, you know. That's always going to look cool. So that's always going to look cool, yeah. yeah. So there are those opportunities we do mm -hmm. have sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I can neither confirm nor deny that there will be more of that in the future. Or... I think it's safe to say that it, rather than it's, is it open the door? It's, it's we're not closing any doors. Oh yeah, you know the the, the opportunities, really uh, if they present themselves uh, to do something similar again, then you yeah, know, why not? I mean, yeah. we just like the freshness of it, and uh, yeah, so yeah, you know, there's a height, uh, a, a elevated interest in those cold troopers, and so why not? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, give people a variety, mm -hmm. and yeah. Based I, off of how long it took me to find that set, it looks like it's selling pretty well right out of the gate. Uh, <laughs> Is that a pretty good indicator? You guys watch that to see, hey, these types of clone battle packs sell well, let's just continue to make different battalions or I don't know. We don't I mean we don't monitor. We every once in a while they they let us know, oh, it's already sold out kind of thing. Uh yeah. but um yeah, that, that we can, we have eyes on these things, yeah, of course. Yeah. Sure, uh, sure. Um uh the score everything has it, you know, yeah. the, how it's doing. Um, sure, of course, when, when something sells out that quick, uh, or, that's, or a that's a great indicator. That's a great indicator that it's yeah. popular, but we don't really want things to sell out because we want people to be well, able to get, that, that, yeah. get a hold of them, but... Uh, the but market right. always catches up. Yeah. It, 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 so. yeah. Well, on the topic of the market and you guys watching things, it's no surprise that LEGO Star Wars sets, and in particular minifigures, tend to skyrocket in price depending on the desirability of the mm. character. Yeah. Um, my question would be, do you guys watch those markets at all, even just on a personal interest level? <laughs> and if so, does it ever affect the decision to remake that character or, hey, let's keep them... Are you talking about the, the, the user like the market? The reselling? Yes, yes. Ah, After a figure's retired, you know, like, as of our conversation yeah, right yeah. now, a Cloud City Boba Fett in mint condition, I mean, you're talking oh, yeah. two thousand twenty five hundred dollar oh, USD. Yeah. We I, yeah. I, I, we've had this question before um, in previous years, and and we would never, it would never even be a business consideration to for us to to go in and and try to affect anybody's uh, second hand oh, sure. business uh, yeah. in a, either a positive or a negative way. It, yeah. Our in our focus is entirely on on strong getting the, lineup. Yeah, getting the strongest lineup, and if yeah. it ends up influencing, hopefully it's not influencing people's investments in a really terrible way. We don't want to <laughs> yeah. destroy it. Yeah, of course. For anybody. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, in a few words, not not so much. Not not really paying attention to the resale no. market at all. Just more paying attention to what people are wanting to get. If yeah. there's something new. That's what we pay attention. To. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Because even with the anniversary wave where you guys went back and mm -hmm. redid some of the early 1999 sure, era, sure. you know, one of the more desirable figures <coughs> is Lando from the 2003 Cloud City. Mm -hmm. And he was basically remade just with new back printing. Sure. But it didn't really affect the value of the old Lando mm. that much. In fact, well, it's only continued to go up. Well, that's good, I guess. Cool. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> it's, I guess it's just kind of interesting to know that you guys can even almost one-to-one -one remake a figure mm -hmm. and the original still tends to retain its value. I guess as long as there's some isn't kind that of key Isn't that true yeah. with almost anything? I mean, even, it wouldn't matter what, whether we're talking about cars or guitars or whatever, it, it, any kind of a, um, if, you, if you've got proof that it's somehow been manufactured 30 years ago, it, there's some It'll nostalgic be, value. Yeah, yeah. Sure. You It'll can't be worth that. more. Yeah, that's true. So That's a good point. Well, nostalgia actually leads me to my final question <laughs> for you guys. Okay. All right. So it can be a set you worked on. It can be a set before your time in LEGO Star Wars. But do you have a definitive favorite set 
or a set that you really feel defines the theme? Ooh. I mean, the, are, are we talking about a set that is already out there that we've seen? That's what you're talking about. Well, if you want to tell me about something that's <laughs> not out, I will not. <laughs> because because, well, the, the, because if, if you're looking for something that isn't out there, we're not going to be able to tell you much. Uh, of course, of course. Mm. Well, I think I do have a favorite. I don't know. I have, to think, I have to think about it in terms of his question about defining the theme. You can give me two answers. Okay. Well, I'm not well, going to fight you. Uh, one of my favorites, and it's also partially for selfish reasons, was the Moss Eisley Cantina that we put oh, out. Yeah, I can understand. Because uh, that was like a dream for, like, Cesar and I wanted to do that forever, and it finally we got a chance to do it. So many fun characters and stuff I got to work on. Uh, and it's like a super iconic location that we just we've done before in a smaller capacity, but I feel like we really did justice and that made me feel, yeah. I think for me, I think that it'll be a long while before I, I hope I get a chance to revisit a similar type of a process, but when I worked on, when I developed um, Grogu, the, the bigger figure, mm. uh, that mm -hmm. was uh, a process that different than doing any other uh, ship because it was almost as though you are building life into this little mm. thing character in yeah. front of you because every little brick positioning in one way or another had a huge impact on whether or not you actually brought that character's um, expression and, and um, it brought life to that character so that aspect of things you don't necessarily get when you're doing a, a ship uh, mm. although you'll get technical challenges which are fantastic this was just another element so I think that for me that was uh, that was amazing, and and also just knowing that it appealed to so many different mm. fans of different ages and yeah you know, genders, whatever you know, it was a big, broad appeal as far as Star Wars goes. So that that's probably one of my favorites. That set came out in an interesting era where a lot of people were getting back into Lego because of you know being at home sure. for the thing. Sure. Yeah. And so to your point, it's interesting that that set has so much layered complexity to it not only from a design standpoint but also for a historical standpoint mm. you know 10 15 years from now when you know long time fans look back that very well may be somebody's first set yeah you're, you're right you're right because the you know baby yoda hype at the time yeah, was everywhere sure. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> incredible uh. incredible well we do have time for a couple more questions so i do have well, some bonus round all right good. fire away so again lego star wars fans tend to be pretty vocal for better or worse sometimes. Uh, from your guys' side, you know, having relatively limited opportunities to speak directly to fans, hmm. is there anything you wish fans knew about your perspective of the process that you think maybe could hmm. uh, help both sides understand each other? Hmm. You know, like our development process, kind of the restrictions and rules that we have to hmm. adhere to maybe? I don't know. Well, I mean, it's a great question. Yeah. And um, thanks for asking. And yeah, I think sometimes we do think of things that it would be great. I know that every once in a while they, we get the comment that, oh, it, it, they could have just printed that. Or it could have just, it would have been easy. It was a no-brainer mm, kind of thing. Mm. And um, <laughs> it, it never is. It's <laughs> never a no-brainer. It's never just a question. Like Even something like printing on both sides of our 2 d body and imagine you've got to you've got to put a plat piece of plastic it's got to be put into a jig holding that precisely thousands and thousands of times over and over and over again this this uh, 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 automated process has to hit that thing properly Just every right. time yeah not only does it have to do that on one side now it has to do it on the other side mm -hmm. and Although it seems like in uh, it should be a very very simple thing to do and it shouldn't cost anything else uh, extra to do it, mm -hmm. it's not the case and um, it's frustrating sometimes to get the criticism that we do uh, mm. for that type of thing as though we don't care or we don't yeah. really oh, no. want it. We definitely, we definitely care. care. We want to always make the best thing we can. This, yeah. There are a lot of moving pieces, I yeah. guess, is what, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're, we're not just wild and free, I guess, to mm -hmm. make exactly what we, you know, yeah. uh, think it should be or, yeah. or try, want it to be, you know. Um, so, yeah, but a lot of interesting challenges that we have to face. Yeah. And yeah. 
uh, we do the best we can. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I, I know for sure that we have never, ever held back on anything that we, if we were capable, if we had the, the budget and we had the technology and we had, the, the, we always go yeah, for we'd it. We'd never just say, nah. No, they don't deserve <laughs> it kind of thing. It's yeah. just that, that kind of yeah. bot just doesn't even work. We want to load them up as much yeah. as possible. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's actually opens an interesting door. Uh oh yeah. <gasps> Speaking of opening doors. Mm. Perfect time. Yeah. Uh, speaking only about past sets, mm -hmm. not digging for anything in the future, is there maybe a time that each of you can think about that you really wanted to do something and it just couldn't come to fruition for one reason or another? Mm -hmm. And I guess this is our last question. <laughs> yeah, that's a thinker. Um, do, 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 do. I mean, I'm sure there were characters I wanted to put in that yeah, you could probably think of a character. Just to, you know, we, we usually, based off the size or price of the set, we have a set amount of minifigures. Of course, we'll always want to add more, mm -hmm. but it sometimes probably doesn't uh, mm -hmm. doesn't pan out. I don't have a specific example. I, I'm right drawing here. a blank. I, I really don't... I, I don't know. We always we always work our way around uh, yeah. the, whatever challenge yeah, comes up. So, so one of the, I can just <laughs> maybe me. say something that's not an answer, but it's something similar, is that is that I remember when I first started, many, many, many years ago, a designer that had been here for quite a number of years told me, remember all these different iterations that you do, the, it's the final one that the public sees, and they're going to love it, even though you need to make sacrifices here and there due to, maybe it could be because it's not, stability in the model is not high enough. Mm -hmm. might, get, might be able to do something that looks amazing, but it's going to be really difficult for an eight-year-old to build. Mm -hmm. Then we need to uh, do, do things in a different way. So sometimes that can be a, a, a sacrifice made there. Mm -hmm. But knowing that that eight-year-old is going to really love that model in the end, mm -hmm. that makes up for that sacrifice. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. This has Man, been such a pleasure. You. Yeah. Absolutely. What you saw and you liked what you heard, feel free to click that subscribe button for more LEGO videos coming in the near future.